have a common a unity purpose agenda uh, for the people. All right, uh, Machako Senator Johnson Muthama has severed ties with Wiper Party. Muthama accused the party leader Kalonzo Musyoka of imposing candidates on voters in the controversial nominations. Muthama cited unjust nominations for the governor's seats in Makueni, Machakos, and Kitui counties, which he blamed on the Wiper Party leader. Muthama will not defend his Machakos senator's seat in the general election and has turned his focus to campaigns for NASA flag bearer Rilo Dinga. Leo, you may handicap Barua, Kachama, and you may Jizul, Kama, and Chama, and appear Kama. Mwenyekiti wa Wiper Democratic Movement. Kutoka leo, tarehe 26, mwezi wa ene, mwaka wa kumina saba. All right, so like I mentioned, we have a conversation here in studio, and right now I'm joined by a brilliant uh, panel of guests. Starting with my extreme right is Dan Manzo, who's a member of parliament for Makweni. He's also a lawyer and a member of Wiper Party. He'll be telling us the troubles that are, we're seeing with <laughs> your party. <laughs> also, we have Opio Wandai. He's a Gunja member of parliament and also the director of political affairs in ODM. Thank you very much uh, for yeah. joining well, us. Winning, winning and then good. we also have Felix Okach, who's a multilateral trade expert. Thank you very much for Thank joining you us. Much. You'll be telling us about this high cost of leaving. Oh, yeah. We're tired of paying 180 for flour. It will be more. It will be more. Time goes. It will be more. <laughs> oh, yeah. But how is that? And I want oh, us to start yeah. the conversation oh, from. Yeah. The... <laughs> you seem so confident about, no, about you that. You see, when you talk about the importing base, it will yeah. come over. It takes time, isn't mm -hmm. it? It mm -hmm. takes time. All the right. Races, yeah. But then. Ordering and the whole lot takes time. Interesting. So mm. we'll start the conversation from Parliament resuming, and that is one of the top agenda that they have. Yeah. Uh, and I've been uh, quoted as saying that, you know, this supplementary budget is coming too late in the day and that the president is not in touch with the reality. Why do you say that? And yet, you know, at least we're seeing that he's doing something, even if it's late in the day. But you see, what something is he doing, really, mm -hmm. uh, rather than playing PR with the public to hoodwink them that uh, something is being done? While in reality, there's absolutely nothing that is being done by this administration to alleviate the suffering of the vulnerable mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. Insofar as the skyrocketing prices of, of these commodities is concerned. Betty, why do I say so? You know, governments exist for the welfare of the people. Mm -hmm. And the moment you find a government uh, has lost touch with the reality on the ground, then there is cause for concern. Because everybody knew, right from last year, that there'll be a shortage of maize in this country. Remember, me, I sit in the Agriculture Committee in mm -hmm. Parliament, mm -hmm. together with my friend, Honorable Bumanzo, and we raised the red flag. Right from the time they imported fake fertilizer through corrupt deals. And farmers raised an uproar in the North Rift that their maize was yellowing abnormally. Not the normal yellowing of, 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 of water logging, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we know very well, but the yellowing because of poor quality fertilizer. They buried their heads in the sand and tried to give excuses here and there. Now it has come to pass that the production did not meet the, did not actually meet the expectations. Mm. Okay? And therefore, what we are seeing happening is not likely to address this matter in, in, a, in a long term. Because if you asked me, because agriculture is the mainstay of the country's right. economy. And really, agriculture is what fills the country. And if you ask me, what policy has this Jubilee administration ever conceived and implemented in the sector of agriculture since its coming to power in 2013? I'll tell you nothing. What they touted as their flagship project in agriculture, the so-called one million acre irrigation scheme, mm. became a cropper at the altar of massive corruption. All right. Massive corruption, yeah. I'd like to hear uh, Manzo's uh, view about this. Uh, what is your take about well, where we are as a country? Previously, the president has said that, you know, he blamed it on drought, and, you know, drought is really 
it's not in, the, in, in his hands or in the government's mm -hmm. hands to deal with. No, the rains are here, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> not drought. They just started that. <laughs> because uh, there is always planning for drought. Yes. When we make a budget, we keep about 10 billion shillings yes. to deal with the drought situation. We have a lot of uh, food in store in North Rift and many parts of Rift Valley, but the farmers' maize is never bought. They prefer to get uh, food sources from elsewhere, so that's a few individuals can make a kill out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the price for sugar cannot really be explained by drought. <laughs> you know, in fact, that sugar growing area has uh, experienced a drought, but that did not really stop growing of cane. Yeah. So, so, so there is no excuse at all about drought. Um, even uh, the so-called relief food, which you have a proper money for, enough budget for, is uh, it's not reaching the people as it's supposed to be. In fact, it's a big shame. And we had advised the government if they could now send the food to school so that at least children can feed. Mm -hmm. uh, at least when, when I went to school, that's what happened. The only yes. meal I had during drought period was at school. Now it is going through the provincial administration. It cannot be accounted for. It is too little, and we have yet put enough money. It can only be explained because of that ministry particularly, where, uh, where they do relief, uh, right, right now headed by... The Honorable Kiyunjuri has a history of corruption. I'm not saying the Honorable Kiyunjuri is, but <laughs> previous history. So the systems in that ministry are likely to frustrate the Honorable Kiyunjuri. And right. I better tell him now that there's a problem. You need, we have enough money. We have budgeted for him enough money. We need f f uh, enough food for the people. Uh, and this drought is going to be short-lived. When it comes to animals, you know, it was a big scandal. Uh, the, the buying, the, the supplying of grass... Uh, the, the buying of animals, you know, in the, uh, you know, in those areas, and even whoever was insured, it was selective, it was poorly managed, under the Ministry of Livestock, uh, under the Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock. All right. And therefore, we need to get serious as a country. I think the president really, really, really got to be serious with his ministers. All right. Interesting view there. Okach, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this one. Who, can, who do you apportion this blame to as an economist from where you sit? I'll give it what's called economic analysis, mm -hmm. so that not the political, yes. economic as aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And I think when I came here, there's something called serendipity, like fate or luck. Yes. You saw in the program, we are seeing the uh, security agencies mm -hmm. making arrangements, planning for the next election. Mm -hmm. You saw that, isn't it? Yes. Similarly, we need a similar arrangement to be planning for our food. Like in your house, you plan. What mm -hmm. will I buy today for my children? Mm -hmm. I must go home with mm -hmm. food. I don't go with an excuse. Mm -hmm. Now, in this country, going by the statistics results, uh, statistical economic survey, which came out just a couple of weeks ago, it showed how in 2015, we produced 215, 42 million bags of maize. That was produced, 42 million, in 2015. Mm. In 2016, it was 37 million bags, which means there's a shortfall. Yeah. That shortfall will come in the 2017 because production of maize is not overnight. It takes time. Yes. Nine months or so, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. So it takes time. So a planner would know that actually, since I had shortfall in that previous year, a short, shortfall, I'll get it the next following year. Mm. In 2016, we had a problem. Of course, you can mention fertilizer and other things, but statistically, the reporting of NERCO disease, there's something lethal NERCO disease for maize, mm -hmm. which occurred in 2016, affected much of Narok area. So that, that occurred, among other things. So there was less production. Now, when there was less production, it means that the planners must take action to cover for the following year, which we didn't. Come January, the signals were showing itself because all of a sudden the price of foods were going up. We were talking about inflation. It's not inflation. Mm -hmm. Of course, inflation is the general price of increase of everything. Mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. But in this country, it's not inflation. It's just the shortage which caused that. You know, uh, CPI, Central uh, uh, Consumer Price Index, which is produced by Central Bureau of Statistics, mm -hmm. shows a range of 12 items which they use for measuring inflation. Mm -hmm. Among them, education, health, recreation, right. drinks, and the whole lot. Mm -hmm. If you look at that sector, that, that column, that, that, the, the, the column of those goods, that range, the biggest increase is 20%, which was on food, mm -hmm. translating to 11.4% over mm. on an average. So and a planner would say that actually the issue is food. So he should have captured it from the beginning and in January, mm. that we have to import food. How do we import? There's a case of cereals have be, has, has been the major player in terms of regular, regulating price of food. They sh should have imported food in time, or should allow the millers to import 
the, 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 the maize, and they would have done it. Right. But you didn't give them opportunity to import. You've just come say, I've given, I've given a waiver, tax waiver, but that was, it came too late yeah. and not in time. Okay. And now the so-called importation of maize will be a problem because, <laughs> A, when, when the cereals are going to import maize, and it might, they might bring the maize with a flux, talking like last time, or GMO, mm. it will end up in Mombasa. Kenya Blue Stars will stop us it's getting in. We'll still have the same problem. So it's, it's, but it's if you allow the mailers to bring what's required, you're safer. All right. Yeah. We'll continue the conversation. For now, I want us to cross over to, my, to our City Centre student and talk to my colleague, uh, Rosalind Wabala. Thank you so much for joining us, Rosalind. So as Parliament opens today, first of all, are we expecting there's going to be a quorum? Is everybody back after the nominations, wins and uh, losses? And uh, what is like top of the agenda apart from you know the cost of leaving and uh, the gender rule which is really where we're looking to see if it's going to be finally a reality uh, Betty thank you so much uh, Parliament is resuming that is the National Assembly uh, because the Senate is still on recess and uh, they, they can't they have an entry of so many things to to address including the issue of uh, the cost of living uh, which if you had the uh, a state house spokesman Manoa talking about uh, bringing in a supplementary budget. But even as they come in with a supplementary budget, we also have the stalemate, the, the position of a division of revenue bill that they were not able to dispense with before they went on recess last month. And uh, as we stand now, the mediation committee that was formed by the two speakers, uh, the position is that the, the mediation uh, committee was not able to complete his work, mm -hmm. and that means that the division of revenue collapsed. And uh, that is what now we expect this afternoon any member of the budget committee or the chairman to bring the House up to speed with the position of the bill. And if indeed the bill has collapsed, then the House will have to publish a new bill because this bill originates from the National Assembly even as it's passed by both houses. Now this is one of the major issues we expect. We also expect the House to, to debate on the finance bill that uh, comes in line with the Appropriations Act which was already enacted by the, the President even before the division of uh, revenue was passed. All right. Uh, what about the gender rule? That's something that uh, the court has, of course, pronounced itself on it. Are we expecting that it's going to finally be passed or it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a wait and see? Okay, Betty, if you look at some of the other priority business that has been lined up, uh, the gender bill is not one of them, if you look at it. But uh, uh, the leader of majority, that is Adam Duale, had indicated that this is one of the bills that they will focus on. They will rally members to pass this bill. But remember the period that this house is going to sit is from today up to June uh, 15th, before again they go on recess. Mm. So we hope within this time that this gender bill will be considered alongside other bills that are still pending before this house. Remember the time of this house expires on the uh, date of elections. So even if they go on uh, recess uh, after the, the June uh, 15th, we expect maybe uh, they come in on special sitting to just dispense with some of the, 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 the bills that really require to be dispensed of uh, with this house. Also, the, there is the issue of nomination of members to the regional assembly, that is the East African Legislative Assembly, uh, which the current members, their term expires on June 4th. So again, Again, this House is supposed to deliberate on the names of those who have so far applied and uh, come up with the nine names where Jubilee has uh, uh, five slots. Uh, we see ODM has two slots, we, uh, Wiper has one, and uh, there is also one position for either another party or an independent candidate. All right, finally, Rosalind, let's talk about the electioneering period. Of course, campaigns are already in full gear in some uh, places in the country right after the nominations. And you say that, you know, there's going to be another recess come June 15th. How, how, how serious are we expecting, you know, this um, uh, resuming of uh, Parliament to be, especially considering that, you know, they're also busy, the legislators are also busy uh, campaigning. They'd want to go down to the grassroots and talk to the Wananchi about the votes and everything. Uh, Betty, we, we hope that uh, the members also take their legislative work seriously. <laughs> Remember, there are those who lost in the primaries. We don't know if they will take the work seriously and just come and legislate within this period. Uh, remember before they went on recess, we had two serious uh, 
uh, business before the house. That was the fate of the current chair of the National uh, Lands Commission, Professor Sozuri, which was being considered by the Lands Committee, which again uh, faced a quorum hitch and they were not able to come up with the recommendations and just table the report in the house. We also had uh, the issue of the Auditor General, which was being considered by the Finance Committee, uh, which again had uh, an injunction from uh, the courts uh, to put it on hold. We don't know if these are some of the businesses that will proceed, but just before, towards the er, uh, tail end of, uh, uh, before the, the MPs went on recess, there was a serious quorum hitch in the house. And we hope that maybe now that some of them are dispensed off with uh, uh, the primaries and they come from the dominant areas where they don't need to campaign so much, we hope that they will take the work seriously before they go again on recess. All right, thank you very much, Rosalind. I have two of them here. They'll tell us you know, how seriously they'll take their work. All right, thank you very much, Rosalind Wabala, joining us from our city centre studio. So she has mentioned quite a number of things and we'll be getting deeper into them, but I'd like us to, con uh, to finish the conversation we are having earlier. So what really then is a solution? Now that we're here, Kenyans are paying 180 shillings for, th for flour. What are we expecting right now? Without criticizing the amends that are currently being made. Manz, I'll start with you. Yes, sir. I, I think, first of all, the solutions are long term mm -hmm. uh, because the problem started a long time ago. So you can't solve them overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, we look into a situation whereby Kenya invests in its resources. Mm -hmm. We have not exploited our coal in Kitui. We have not exploited our oil in, uh, in Turkana. Uh, if we had exploited our oil, for example, we, we, we will have uh, 40 times the budget we have. We'll have 40 trillion Kenyan shillings, and uh, life will become easier in Kenya, though oil comes with its own complications. We have many other resources which have not been exploited. Improvement of security will definitely bring more tourists in the country and will have extra uh, foreign exchange, and this will begin stabilizing the economy. Mm -hmm. So, so, so there, there are short-term measures. You remember uh, the issue of the one million acres, because we, we have a lot of water going to the ocean. The rains have not been too, you know, too scarce. There mm. has been enough water. There was flow of water in Tana and Athi. Uh, we have the Fuake Athi Dam, which you know has uh, stalled out of corruption and uh, fights here and there, which the Minister of Water by now mm. uh, should, be, should, should be getting toward. Because this is what will supply uh, a clear flow of water into, into the, that one million acres in Gulalu, so that uh, the water stabilizes and the irrigation does not stop temporarily because the water flow is, is, is not stable. So the solutions are long term. Uh, I believe uh, the Jubilee government will manage a few, uh, very minimal, and uh, the NASA government in August uh, will bring change into the country. All right, Wanda, I'd like to hear your thoughts on well, this. Well, I, I concur uh, uh, largely with my colleague, uh, Honorable Manzo, in the sense that uh, if you want to look at this matter more critically, you need to understand that uh, the country needs to invest uh, uh, more in agriculture, hmm. which still remains our backbone of our economy. If, in fact, if I were in power, <laughs> I would address seriously the matter of agriculture and infrastructure, and many other things will fall in place. Okay? Uh, firstly, you know, many countries in the world, including the United States of America, they cushion their farmers. They, they do whatever it takes, and uh, they subsidize agriculture. They subsidize farming because they know that once you do that, you save a lot more. Okay? All this money that we spent now in importing maize would, would not be necessary mm -hmm. if we had invested heavily to address the issues that affect agriculture at the basis, at the, base, at the, at the basic level. Now, that is one. Two is the matter of corruption. Because even the funds that you need to subsidize agriculture are not there. Mm. And why are they not there? It's because of corruption. These funds are being looted left, right, and center by a few people in power. So as a stopgap measure, you can look, look and address, you can look, look at um, perhaps uh, the, uh, the idea of importing uh, zero-rated maize and so on and so forth. That is fine. But a long-term solution to the problems we are facing insofar as the skyrocketing uh, prices of basic food commodities rest with putting in place a government that is responsive to the needs of the people. Mm. A government that has got a plan for the people that it uh, governs. And that government cannot be Jubilee government, I can assure you. Yeah. Okay, oh, let's hear your thoughts on this one. Short-term and long-term solutions. Short-term is to import the maize. Yeah. But how uh, long is that going to take before... The, the, it will take time. Because what the government should do, A, allow 
all persons to import that quarter of 8 million bags. Mm -hmm. Allow millers, allow cereals board, and the youth, because we've been importing crude oil, we import oil as well. So the youth, some of them can get in that business and import the white maize required within the short time. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing what can be done now immediately. 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 So that we get we get moving. Okay. Because we discovered from the explanation I gave you on from the fall in maize production and the rising prices, the problem is only maize, which is the staple food. Like if you're in Uganda, it would have been matoke. If you're in a, a China, yeah, yeah. those is to be rice. What about the sugar? Sugar is mismanaged in the factories. That one <laughs> is mismanagement. Same thing. You see, Mumi has we bring, bring somebody of, of a different color to run the place. He's, he's worse. Our people are better there. Than <laughs> but but that's another but story. They didn't, do, they didn't do much when they were there, even if we had people of the same color. Before the sugar no, more, sorry. no, I'm not supporting individuals. Yeah. But remember, there were days when Mumias was doing very well, mm -hmm. in, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We were even buying shares for Mumias. The, <laughs> the man in charge was a black man. But now we brought this one, there it is. So, you have, the, mm -hmm. so sugar is mismanagement. Milk. I'm talking from support the local Monanchi. Support the farmer. So it's about the farmer. Yeah. Yeah. Support supporting the farmers. Yeah. The long run, support the farmers in terms, as he said, yeah. support the farmers in production of milk, uh, production of sugar yeah. and maize. In Europe, there was something called common agricultural policy. Mm -hmm. The farmers are guaranteed a price and given protection. If you don't guarantee a farmer, he will not produce much. Yes. I'll give an example. Last, last year, in my, three years ago in my home, I planted some, some, some beans mm -hmm. and had a lot of it. A time came when I could not sell it. Mm. You say it's mad, but I couldn't sell it. Mm -hmm. But if there's a program where there was a guaranteed price, I would take it to a cereals and it's taken, I would get my money. So there are many farmers outside who are not being supported. So the issues support the farmer. That doesn't sound like rocket science. So why hasn't it been happening? I, when I gave the example, I started with security arrangement. They're having a meeting to discuss, isn't it? <laughs> it's about planning. <laughs> now, in our case, in agriculture, we've just sat. And the well, people who know agriculture, they're better than us, much more. And they see it, but they're not bothered. Well, you know, Betty, it's not that simple. Hmm? You know, uh, as he rightly puts it, once you make agriculture profitable mm -hmm. to the farm, yes. the farmer is a rational human being. Yes. He will put more efforts mm -hmm. in it. Once he's assured that, that, that his investments will bring returns, mm -hmm. be it uh, livestock production, be it milk, dairy farming, be it uh, maize farming, mm -hmm. be it sugar, sugar farming. Yeah. Okay? But secondly, the crisis we are seeing in these sectors, be it sugar and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. the artificial crisis mm -hmm. caused by people in power to enable them benefit as individuals. Because they know that once you make the sugar industry or sector competitive enough, efficient and competitive, they will not have the opportunity to import sugar, mm -hmm. okay? So as to be able to make a kid. Okay. They know that. Mm. They know that once farmers are given incentives mm. to produce enough maize, mm. mm -hmm. there will be no shortage of maize and therefore there will be no importation. And they know they make a kill when they import maize. So we need to address this matter uh, holistically mm -hmm. without looking at the symptoms. Otherwise, we shall keep on addressing the symptoms until the chickens come home to roost. <laughs> Do you see, like, the production yes, of, yes. of flowers? Kenya is a leading producer of flowers that, and vegetables in Europe, isn't mm. it? And when you go there, Kenya is the leading country. And we're producing it here because there's a focus on that mm. sector. Mm -hmm. So in our case, if we just focus supporting the farmer, we'll get it home yeah. and dry. All right. That's just, all we need. Just an addition, you know, first of all, uh, farmers, uh, f milk farmers and uh, coffee farmers and mm. many other farmers thrive when they are in serious cooperatives. Uh, you, can, you know what happened now to the new KCC mm. and how farmers were looted by the mm. state. Mm. Uh, so, so that's where it begins. We, we, need, mm. we need these farmers encouraged. We need them in serious cooperatives. Right. But the government, instead of promoting cooperatives, it is killing them by its own policies. Uh, and, and that's where you mobilize. It's a way of mobilizing farmers. And the countries which have been very successful, like Zambia, in fact, Zambia can buy, can give us food. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we are going all the way to Brazil. <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. <laughs> we, have, we, have, uh, we, have, we have, our neighbors have a lot of food. And in fact, mm -hmm. recently, all these South African countries experienced very good rains while we were roasting in, in you know, <laughs> the in drought. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a lot of food nearby. We can even be shipped by lorries yeah, and, uh, and brought to the country. <laughs> so we need to get serious with, yeah. the, with the country. The, serious pro the biggest problem is corruption. There is yeah. corruption everywhere, especially in the Ministry of Agriculture. You know, everything, there's a sector they call, uh, you see, agriculture is devolved, but there's a sector uh, they, they call food security. 
that is where all the criminal activities take place. <laughs> and nobody has the courage to prosecute anybody. The ESCC is not properly equipped mm -hmm. intentionally. Mm -hmm. So that it is unable to handle all the corruption in the country. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so everything seems to be going back down to mm -hmm. corruption and uh, not having proper planning, that, like you said. And that the, will the, catch. the final thing, we can call it food balance. Food, food balance. Mm -hmm. We have a balance on, balance on food. That this is, the this is the production, this is the import, this is the consumption. And the difference is that, then we bring it up. So we have a balance sheet on food. On food. And All then right. things will flow. Things will flow. Yeah. All right, so we'll come back to the conversation and uh, talk about uh, other issues that we're looking at as uh, Parliament resumes. But for now, though, I want us to cross over to the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development. I understand that the CSF, uh, Fred Matiangi, is currently uh, launching the National Qualification Authority. So let's just uh, cross over there and listen to what that is all about. In this country. It's too chaotic, and it's, it's time to put it in order so that everyone uh, is on the same page. And whatever and whenever we are needed, whatever you need from us, we will provide so that we can step up and be that modern nation, that modern education sector that is producing graduates to compete globally, as we expect we are going to do. God bless you. Thank you very much. Club really enough for a CS. Thank you, sir, for your guidance and encouragement and um, showing. All right, so we seem to have missed that speech, but uh, we have our reporter there. She's going to be talking to us about this. But uh, what we understand is that the CS for Education, uh, Matiangi, has launched the, uh, qualific the Kenya Qualifications Authority. This is really to crack down on fake certificates. So we'll be getting to hear what more um, he said in that speech. For now, though, we'll take a break.